Summer is here, everyone, and we all know that it takes a lot to fill the days that school once did. For many people with disabilities, it is important to keep learning going through the summer and to make sure that students are still working towards their goals, whatever they may be. In this month's virtual meeting, we will give you some tips on how to use guided access, how to keep your iPad dry, we will take a look at some great educational apps for summer and give you some simple and helpful tips on keeping your kids engaged. Thanks for joining us. touch for summer learning because it's small and it's easy to carry around so I can play it on on vacation when when there's no internet because my apps don't need internet to play on on vacation. During the summer I like to use my iPad mini to play educational games like Scotch where I can the code and program, Kindle where I can books and Sushi Monster where I can learn my multiplication facts. There's an app called Spelling Star. I really like it because it makes it more fun, but my mom tries to make it fun by pulling out the whiteboard, but that's not that fun either. So my mom bought this, this app at the App Store. It's called Spelling Star. And first you say the word and then you try to spell it. It's like the because every week I have to get a spelling test. I don't like studying for it. So it's fun in this way. You say a sentence for the word and then you try to spell it. It's kind of hard to do pencil and paper because you have to use a pencil and everything and paper. And so it makes it a little bit more complicated. But sometimes it gives you hints. Like in the paper it won't give you a hint. But sometimes in these learning games it gives you hints so it's easier. And you can start over and you don't do all that erasing, which messes up your paper a lot. I'm going to show you one of Apple's most popular accessibility features, and that is called Guided Access. It came out in around August of 2012 in iOS 6, and it's just been enhanced with each version. What that allows you to do is keep someone in a particular app. The parent, teacher, or caregiver can set a timer that would keep the child in that particular app for the allotted amount of time, or you could just say that they can't do anything other than that app until um, you allow them out. To turn it on, you're going to go to your settings. So I'm going to tap on settings. Select general from the left navigation menu. And so I will go down to where it says accessibility and tap on it. I'm going to look for the learning section and I could see the words guided access right towards the middle of my screen. And right now it currently says off. I'm going to tap on the word off and I'm going to use that toggle control to change it to on. When I do that, I'm going to set up my passcode. So, um, this in this makes it so that no one can get into the iPad, um, unless they have that passcode. You typically want to pick. It needs to be four digits, but you typically want to pick something that's a little bit trickier than one, two, three, four. But for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to put one, two, three, four. I'm going to um, tap back on the guided access panel. And I can default my time limits. Um, I could also set some alarms. So if you have students that react to a certain alarm, um, maybe uh, a buzzer would scare them, but maybe they would need something um, like words, hello, I can choose that, or I can change it to bamboo or a chord. Um, I'm gonna go back to um, that panel that I was at. I'm going to choose speak, and so that would allow it to speak to me saying your time is up. And then um, 
I want to make sure that the, my accessibility shortcut is on. So that allows me to use the home button. When I triple click the home button, then guided access to shortcut will come up and I can enable it. Okay, so the key to guided access working, um, if you were going to try it out, you have to be in an app first. So I want to scroll to my app, and I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And Epic is an app that we have not reviewed yet, but it is a great reading app, almost like a Netflix for uh, the for books. So if I know that I want a student to be in this for a certain amount of time, I would triple tap and then it's going to ask me for my passcode. And again, this is what I set up in the settings. And it kind of gives me a menu where I can change my time. So if I want my student to read or my son or daughter to read for 20 minutes, I can set that time limit. I could also turn the time off completely. And I'm going to say resume in the top right hand corner. It tells me guided access has started for 20 minutes. And now the student cannot get out. They can continue to pick their books and they can read, but they can't get out of the app even if they tapped on. If I get close to my time ending, it will tell me how, many time, how much time I have left and that is a feature that I turned on in the accessibility panel. 29 seconds remaining. And say they tap on the home button, it will come up and say guided access is enabled, triple, cl triple click the home button to exit along the top and it tells them how many minutes they have remaining. In order to get out of the app, say your child is finished or uh, you need to, you pick the wrong app by mistake, in order to access the, the controls and to get out of it, you would triple tap the home button and the enter passcode um, screen comes up. So I can put my passcode in and now I can either, I can do lots of things here. I can change the time limit. So if I wanna change it to one minute, Um, I can end it in the top left hand corner. I can resume. When the time is expired, the child would have to pass the iPad to the caregiver, the teacher, or the parent to get off of that screen, who would then have to put the passcode in. By tapping on the options button in the bottom left hand corner, I can disable and enable some of the buttons. I can enable the keyboard or take the keyboard off. I can um, enable the volume buttons and then the sleep and wake button um, so that the child can't get out of it or, or just turn it off to let their time run out. A really cool feature of guided access that not many people know about is the touch feature. I can select certain parts of my screen that I don't want students to be able to touch or access. So if you'll see in the top right hand corner, I've um, X'd out the search feature and some of the left navigation searching in YouTube so that when it's enabled and when they're in the app, they cannot access anything over in the left hand side you can see it's grayed out and they cannot use the search feature so everything else they can access it's easy for students get lost to get lost on the iPad or on their devices and lose track of time completely I think what's helpful here is if you could teach your um, children that when they tap on it once to get out it will give them the amount of time that's remaining so it's helpful using um, guided access um, so that kids know exactly how much time they have remaining and um, that they can't just sit and
play on the iPad all day. So um, this is just a real handy tool, a great feature that um, is one of the accessibility features that, that Apple has included in their software. It is wonderful allowing you as the parent or the caregiver or the teacher to stay in control of what your child is doing or what your student is doing on the iPad. We have shown this to teachers and their eyes have just gotten huge thinking of the possibilities. Of Water damage is a common problem when it comes to mobile devices. If you plan to have your device near water this summer, or if you plan to sweat a lot like we do here in Texas, it might be a good idea to protect your investment. There are lots of options on the market when it comes to protecting your device from moisture. Here are a few. The dry case is a clear waterproof bag. It has a clamp and seal with a valve to draw all of the air out of the bag, creating sort of a vacuum sealed effect. I like this option because it gives you access to the headphone and microphone jack so you can listen to tunes or watch a movie when you're near the water. The next option is a lock sack made by lock sack and this is a type of reusable bag. It is something that is durable but that you would want to replace every now and again. A three pack costs around $11. The bag is 8 by 11 and easily fits an iPad Air. You might even be able to have a slim fitting case on the iPad as well. And this would help protect it against bumps and dings. The Life Proof case is sort of brilliant. This case has a hefty price tag, but it will pretty much protect your iPad from water, snow, dirt, snot, Dropping it, you name it, it'll protect it from just about anything. Older versions of the iPad run less expensive for these types of cases. And last, for when you're in a pinch and need something quick and inexpensive, there is the good old Ziploc gallon bag. You can still access the screen through the bag, but you won't be able to use the speakers and I doubt the camera would take a very good picture. Either way, we think this is a great, affordable option for protecting your iPad. It's never too early to start summer learning. Some of our favorite early childhood apps for summer are Splash Math apps, Homer, Letter School, Fiat, Love to Count by Pirate Trio, Sago Mini Doodle Cast, and apps by Toka Boca and Ducky Deck. Splash Math Kindergarten is a collection of fun and interactive summer themed math problems aligned to curriculum standards. The app reinforces math concepts with self-paced and adaptive, adaptive practice anytime, anywhere. The great thing about this app is that it can be used by readers and non-readers. If they are unable to read at the top left there's a purple button audio button that they can tap and it reads it aloud the graphics are adorable it's summer themed all throughout it's really interactive colorful and the students that we reviewed it with really enjoyed it the next step is homer and it's a language arts app Homer is a great comprehensive language arts app with lots of neat activities. The graphics are very high quality and it's apparent that educators had an active part in developing this app because it does align with all curriculum standards. There are in-app purchases, but lots of activities that can be done for free within the app. When we use this app with students, they really enjoyed the draw picture activity. So this is great to use as a reward if, um, if the student or your child completes so many lessons, they can have some free play time. They really like that.
Really, really love Homer. And the last summer app, one of our favorites, is Letter School. This is great for developing handwriting skills as well as practicing. Occupational therapists really like Letter School. This is another app with lots of color, very interactive. And it starts by introducing the letter. Not quite the traditional handwriting app or way of learning handwriting with a pencil and paper, but users can use their stylus and practice proper um, pen or pencil holding techniques with the stylus. And the great thing about the app is that it can be taken on a mobile device anywhere. So if you're traveling or on the go, just grab a mobile device and the kids can have lots of fun and also either get ready for the next school year or they can practice what they've learned. So those are the apps for early childhood. For elementary age students, we love Sushi Monster, Kid and Storybook Maker, Toontastic, Stack the States, Mad Libs, and NASA for some science. Sushi Monster is a clever and challenging addition, subtraction, multiplication practice app. And it meets first through third grade curriculum math standards. It's also great for older students, probably from grades four through six, to go back and review multiplication because it's super fun and cute and kids love it. Students choose what they want to play. And they practice the skills by feeding the monsters numbered plates of sushi. It creates a number sentence to reach the monster's requested number. So in this example, it's 16. If the numbers are wrong, the monster throws a temper tantrum. Kids just think it's funny. And this is an app by Scholastic. And everyone knows Scholastic just has great content. So if the students are having a difficult time, they can also pause and ask for a strategy hint. We've used Sushi, Mon Sushi Monster in classrooms with students with ADHD and learning disabilities, and they all just love this app. Great for critical thinking skills, too, because it's solving the number sentences. The next app for elementary age students is Kid and Storybook Maker by Locomotive Labs. This is a helpful and unique app for making personalized social stories, and it's designed specifically for children who benefit from visual narratives. The app comes with a variety of social stories templates and you can add your own. What sets this apart from other apps for social stories is the ability to add a photo of your child into the scenes. So this is an example that I made or my kids and I made together of our trip to Tennessee last summer and I had taken a screenshot so we put that in. Locomotive Labs' unique LocoLens image detection technology allows you to superimpose your child or student onto the template backgrounds. It's similar to green screening. You just snap a portrait or use one already saved in your library and you let LocoLens pluck your kid out of the picture and place him or her into the story. We've used this app with children's on the autism spectrum in children with speech and language delays, it's really fun to let the kid pose for a picture and then you can match the scene and put them in it. And by involving the child in making social stories, the child receives an MDET social skills session. They create the book, they can share it, it's a lot of fun. And then the last app is Toontastic, which is great for Learning parts of a story, it's interactive, super creative. So students are guided verbally through each area and there are sets and they can add characters. This gives an, students an opportunity to practice creative writing using organizational tools to help them write. Lots and lots of fun during the summer. Kids can do these alone. They can create cartoons with their friends. It's a lot of fun. And this app is free. So those are our apps for elementary students who learn during the summer.
And lastly, for high school, some great apps for summer learning are Khan Academy for math and lots of other subjects, Kendall, Hopscotch, Duolingo, Goodreads, and a fun one is Words with Friends. Khan Academy is an educational app that allows all students to learn almost anything free, and it's great for summer learning. Khan Academy is actually widely known for its math tutorial video videos, and students can start at early math and work their way up, or they can just jump into whatever topic they need help with. Aside from math, there are other subjects like science, economics and finance, arts and humanities, and um, they've added computing, computer science, test prep. So really this can be everything all in one for a high school student for summer learning. One of the reasons that Khan Academy is great for students with learning disabilities as well as typically developing learners is because it gives them the opportunity to learn at their own pace. It's personalized learning. Students are able to watch and rewatch video tutorials as needed. And if they don't understand something, they can stop it and replay it. There are also lots of actual practice activities within Khan Academy. So they can watch the video, do the practice activities, and everything is tracked within the app. So they can go back and see how well they're doing, what areas they need help in, and parents can also check in throughout the summer to see how they're doing. One of our favorite reading apps for teenagers throughout the summer is the Kindle app and downloading the Kindle app gives users the ability to read Kindle books on their mobile device. They can read them on their phone. They can read them on their iPads. They can read them on their computers. The interface is intuitive. It's very user friendly. Just load up your device with summer reading material and head to the pool, the beach, vacation, um, or just find a quiet reading spot at home. This gives typically developing learners and students with special needs lots of extras. There's the options of visual formatting. They can text to speech. Um, it's super easy. If there's um, a word that a student doesn't know, they can simply hold their finger over it and the dictionary definition will come up as well as Wikipedia and Translate. And wherever they go, it saves the location where they last stopped so they can just pick up and pick up where they left off. And along with the Kindle app, a really fun extra reading app is Goodreads. I just have to throw this one in there. It's a great way for teens to discover and share and track their books through the summer. And we've just found that students are more motivated to read after joining Goodreads. They seem to like adding to their books, their completed list, and um, sharing with other people. So Goodreads is fun. And then the last app for middle and high schoolers is the Hopscotch app. And summer is a great time for users and students to start learning how to code. Hopscotch is an iPad app that teaches problem solving, critical thinking, and the fundamentals of computer programming. The app lets users drag and drop blocks and code, learn how to code. Users, users can create games, stories, animations, interactive art, and apps. This is a concept that is increasingly necessary for success in modern careers and with everything going on in school these days, math, science, reading, language arts, computer science, there's just not always time for that. So summer's just a fun laid back time to introduce kids to coding. It is the future. It, well, it's now and it's the future.
And that is it for the middle and high school summer apps. We've come up with a couple of tips that we want to share for using your tablets at home with your kids this summer that might be helpful for you. If you have more than one device in your house, consider creating one for learning activities and apps and another for strictly gaming and streaming apps. These apps might include Subway Surfer, Netflix, YouTube Kids, or Angry Birds. This way, parents might be able to monitor that when a child has a particular iPad, they are focusing on learning games and activities rather than streaming and other fun apps. Headphones can be a great way for a person to reduce background noise and focus on the app they are working in. As a parent, we're always looking for some positive reinforcements. Screen time is a great way to get students and children to do what you want them to do. Why? Because they're motivi motivated by technology. Um, put some things in place like um, create a chart that they can check off or you could check off with some requirements each day. Maybe put reading for 20 minutes out of a book or um, requiring them to write a paragraph of the day or journal entry. Maybe some math problems. Having them clean their room, uh, cleaning, making their bed, picking up clothes, uh, straightening papers. Uh, require them to do something creative for a certain amount of time or finishing their chores. Mobile devices are excellent tools for fine motor development, handwriting, and creative writing. Learners can play interactive activities on the screen with their stylus or finger. There are lots of neat apps that include fine motor development activities like tracing lines, shapes, letters, and numbers, or simple drawing to help develop good hand-eye or coordination. Some of the apps that we like for younger kids are Letter School, I Write Words, Touch and Write, and Ready to Print. And for older kids, they can use apps like iDiary for Kids. They can journal throughout the summer, all of the activities that they do, or write some creative stories. Another app that we like is called Writing Prompts for Kids, and that just helps to get their creative juices flowing. Do you have an Apple TV and you're looking for another way to use it? Well, try monitoring your child's iPad activity by using the AirPlay technology to mirror your child's iPad or device's screen. By doing this, you can be downstairs in the kitchen preparing their lunch while they're upstairs and you can see exactly what they're doing even if they're in another room of the house. With all of that summer technology usage, you're sure to need to charge those tablets often. We recommend finding a specific place in your home for your devices to be charged and consider upgrading to what some people call to be the outlet of the future that has a USB port built right in. These shown here in this picture allow you to charge devices with a simple USB uh, cord. So there's no need to have an extra AC adapter. They can be purchased at any Lowe's or Home Depot or even online. You can charge your iPhones, uh, Kindle Fire, iOS devices, or any Android tablet for that matter. Do you have some apps that you use that you can share with us or summer tips that your family uses when it comes to traveling with technology? You can email us or find us on any one of our social media networks. We hope you'll join us in July when we come to you again virtually and train just a little bit more. This time our focus will be family time apps. We hope to see you then.